All right. Uh, here after the exhibition win for the racers over Brescia 102.57, great to have uh, head coach Steve Prohm here. Steve, maybe just your opening thoughts about the exhibition tonight. Well, it's good to get started. And uh, me personally, it's, it's just good to be back and, and coaching and, and be a part of a great program again. And so fortunate to be here. And um, it was good. You know, the scrimmages are great. But I think this was good for our team just to get out in front of in a fans in a uniform in a real setting in front of people and, and have to play through mistakes and have to, you know, play together. Uh, and I thought they did that, you know, first half, you know, obviously made some mistakes defensively uh, and they made us pay for them and they shot the ball extremely well. But second half, I thought, you know, held them to 28 from the field, 27 from three, uh, didn't turn the ball over but four times, only 11 for the game. Uh, I thought that was really, really important. And then to get about 60 in the second half and then finish the right way. Sometimes these games can get sloppy, but I thought the last five minutes with our bench, our, our bench was into the game and our guys finished the right way. And a perfect example of that when Rod threw the pass, little shake pass to Jackson and he rose up and hit the three. Uh, I thought that was really good. So uh, obviously, you know, it's I heard Calipari speak last night or tweeted something out just to the likes of, hey, we got a good basketball team, but we're at, you know, we're here right now and our goal is to be here, you know, uh, and then we're kind of in the same situation, you know. I've been around a good enough teams and good enough players to know I think we've got some pieces to be a good basketball team, but we still got a lot of building and growing to do and uh, excited about the journey with this group. With two different uh, games coming out uh, under your belt, is there a kind of theme that you've seen with this team already for me? Well, they've responded in both second halves. You know, I think in our in our scrimmage, we were down a little bit, came back um, and put ourselves in a position to win. Uh, and in this, uh, and though we were up, I thought our second half, you know, execution, pace, effort, intensity, focus was a lot better. And uh, so I think it shows that these guys can respond. And so I talk to them all the time, you know, you got team A and team B. Well, team A is our good side. And then team B, yeah, we all have different habits that we brought with us, the good ones we need to bring over to team, B, team A, and then slowly we need to rid ourselves of the, of the bad habits from team B. And that's just going to be a process to that. Coach, for you personally, like old times, getting back on the hardwood? The yeah. It, center for a game? Yeah, it was great. And it's just different now. You know, I mean, I've got four children. Uh, I got, like, you know, there's so many people here that mean a lot to myself and my family. And so it's this place means a lot. And so it's it's good to just get back and, and be at a place I can coach where I've got great relationships and, and good people and and know how important basketball is here. Uh, we've got really good kids and I got a great staff that does a phenomenal job. And now we just got to go on this journey together um, to try to put ourselves in the best position in the Missouri Valley. Um, and it was great, too. We had uh, Cameron Payne spoke to our team today and uh, Man, it gave us some great nuggets, you know, and just talked about accountability and gratitude. And um, it was great. We got to have an opportunity to Zoom with him. And it just that just shows you what this program is about from a standpoint. There's just so many former guys that care and want to give back. Uh, guys on our staff, Marcus and Dante. Jack was a manager here. Um, I used to coach and I came back, you know. And, but Cameron, you know, um, you know, he was phenomenal with the guys today, and it was really cool. But there's so many guys out there that played here that really, really care about this place and understand what Murray's about. And it's just Murray's unique, and it's what makes this program really special. I thought Quincy uh, was able to kind of showcase both sides uh, of his abilities offensively and defensively. He said a second ago that, you know, prior to coming here, he wasn't really considered himself a defensive guy, but he's kind of explored that. How have you seen him develop? In that yeah, he's got great toughness to him. And, you know, he's he, you know, Brian's been hurt a little bit. So he's kind of been in a tough spot where he's been kind of on the other team playing the point guard position. And, you know, really, that's not his natural position, um, but he handles it, you know, like a champion. Uh, but he's got like he's a Murray guy, you know, I mean, he's kind of in the mold of a little bit of a, like a Jawan Long, Isaac Miles, just got some grit and toughness to him and just really, really competes. And he's going to be a big, big piece to our team this year. Coach, you had six players in double figures tonight. End up fifty nine point three percent from the field. You got to be pretty happy with that. Yeah, I am. I think this team, and and like I said, it's 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 in it's in the early stages. But I told these, you know, we have a leadership council, and I talked to them yesterday. 
And I just told him, I said, I've been around enough good players and good teams to know, hey, do we have enough to win? Um, and, and I told him we do. I, and I think, you know, now it's about getting the, the defensive identity, getting the offensive, you know, foundation set and taking playing the right way. It's getting the total buy-in, you know, because there's a process in that. Um, you know, but, you know, that's, you know, that's the that's the biggest thing for us is just the growth, you know, from that standpoint. We just got to continue to grow and, and, and get better, um, you know, from that standpoint. And if we do that, then that's going to give us opportunities, you know, down the road. So. Uh, any update on DJ and do you think you'll see him on Monday? Again? Yeah, you'll see DJ on Monday. DJ's good, man. DJ's been great. I'm a big fan of DJ and he's he's another guy that you know, plays with a great, great energy and, and represents this program, you know, at, at, at a high level. It's just his coach's decision and he'll be ready to roll on, on Monday. Five days until you guys actually tip it up for real. What's the biggest thing that you guys need to work on uh, between now and then? I just think uh, our offensive pace, number one, um, and continue to understand spacing and ball movement. And then the biggest thing, that should be number two, the biggest thing, is just defensively to make sure that our defense is always set. We're really being able to guard the dribble and we can finish plays, nothing easy. You know, the defensive end of the floor, that's gotta be our identity right now. I asked Coach Turner this yesterday, but her, her team's in a different situation than yours with so many new players for you. Can you be overly critical of a team this early when you have so many new guys that are trying to figure out their roles and try to gel together? Yeah, I think you can. And, and and I lost my train of thought on on his question a minute ago. But yeah, I think you can. And that's why I met with these guys yesterday. And I was like, you know what, we need a leadership council. I need four guys that I can meet with once a week, tell them how I feel. And that's what I said is like, guys, we we have enough guys, I think that can like tonight, six guys, 10 or more points, right? It reminds me, and like I said, it's in the early stages of a team that I was an assistant on here. Uh, with Denaro and Isaac Miles and Tony Easley and B.J. Jenkins, Isaiah Cannon, uh, and I'm missing one, but they, I haven't asked six guys right around 10 points. It was only them, uh, Murray State and Syracuse, that did that that year. I think we can be reminiscent of that, you know, from that standpoint. But that, that, that team had been together for a long time, you know, from that standpoint. And so it may take us a while to get there. But I do do because of having five, six, even a seventh guy that you feel capable and comfortable can make shots and make plays. Um, you know, I think you got to be. And it goes back to account accountability. Accountability, gratitude, and humility. You know, those are our three core words, really, as we go forward. Coach, you've had a lot of walk-ons in your, in your career. Yeah. Have you ever experienced? No, he's the he's the most famous. He's he's like the rock star. They rank guys here, and 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 I, John Morant's number one, you know, and then um, and then they say Rod Thomas is like one A, you know, and 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 biggest celebrity. And then you got Cameron and Isaiah and those guys, but um, and the mayor, you know, uh, Bob Rod, but they're, they're they're the most recognizable people in Murray and. Uh, those guys, you know, Ja, Cameron, and Isaiah aren't here right now. So he may, he's really the guys. I mean, the guys joke him all the time. You know, he's probably the biggest celebrity in this city. Because he's going to hate me for saying this, too. Matt got to see it more. Yeah. This is your first time tonight yeah. seeing the crowd. Get. What yeah. was that like? Well, I, we went and visited sororities and fraternities last week. So I saw it there, too. So I've seen it for a couple of weeks now. <laughs> this is just the exclamation point. <laughs> Coach, you had obviously a lot of guys do a lot of things. As we mentioned, Quincy, he was showing off of offense and defense. Uh, Jamari had a stat in at least one in every major stat category. Uh, and then Sam comes out and has four blocks. How does it feel to have guys who can do just a little bit of everything? Where does that put you at as a coach? Well, that's what I think. I think we do have good versatility, and we just got to figure, you know, hey, what is this the game we need to be small? Is this the game we need to be big? Um, but I do. I feel good about really seven – Eight, you know, our first eight, I feel really, really good and, and comfortable with. And then nine, you know, through 13, 14, you know, they're younger guys as they just continue to grow and develop. Uh, but I thought when they came in there, they did really well. And so I think the versatility is the strength of this team, you know, to where if, if, you know, we do have guys that we can go to if somebody has an off night. You did have some guys that are recruits, not just transfers. 
get some playing time in the game. What what is the relationship kind of like in the locker between those transfers and these younger guys, these freshmen? Well, I think the older guys need to set the tone um, because they've been through it. You know, guys like DJ, Jacoby Wood, um, you know, Rob, Jamari, you know, they've been Kenny, um, Quincy, you know, those guys have been through it. And I may be missing somebody, you know, Brian came from junior college. But uh, but those young guys, you know, we just need to be patient with them. And uh, Justin and Sam are, are, you know, the ones you're talking about that played. And, um, you know, they were first two, well, Sam was first one off the bench. Justin was the third after Brian. But both those guys did some really good things for us. And I'm really excited about those guys. I'm excited about all of our freshmen. You know, everybody I talked to, is, everybody has a different journey. You know, Isaiah Cannon stayed in school four years, played in the NBA. You know, Cameron Payne and John left after their sophomore year. Then I coached guys that stayed four years, went to the G League, and then they're in the NBA. You had one and done guys. Everybody has a different path to get where they want to go to. And so the one thing, and I've learned this, is, you know, comparison, you know, is the thief of joy. And you start comparing about this and that just robs you so much. And so those guys, they each have their own journey. They each have their own race. And our biggest job as a staff and coaches and as coaching staff, head coach, assistants, is to understand, you know, the process and understand the journey you know, that they're going to be on. That's why it's great having a guy like Dante on your staff and Marcus, two guys that have been around championship teams, high-level programs, okay, but but journey's totally different. And so they both can really relate to these guys. I got one for you, Coach. Yeah. Um, I got to see everybody play. It's a new conference for Murray State. It's a new era for the university. What's the mindset going forward now? Mindset going forward now is just we we got it. We're off tomorrow, and and we'll watch this tape, and we'll we'll learn from this, and we'll prep for St. Louis tomorrow, uh, and then we'll get back on the floor on Friday. And you know, it's we, we the Missouri Valley starts December first, and it's a phenomenal league. And I said this before: you go in there with great humility and a humble spirit. Um, but we're excited. But it's not. You know, are we ready today? You know. Probably not, you know, but it's November 2nd. You know, we've got time. We've got to continue to grow and get ready. But phenomenal league. It should be a multi-bid league. Um, and we got to continue to, to push, it, push, push that narrative with our league because you've got really, really good teams. The Drakes, Southern Illinois is really good this year. Bradley, you know, Missouri State, Northern Iowa has had great, great success. You know, Indiana State returns a lot of, a lot of people. And, and then you got some teams like ourselves in Evansville. It's – you know, new Illinois State, uh, but it's a really, really good league. And uh, it's a league that when I sat out last year and you watch it, man, it's a really, really well, well respected. It's a top 10 league in the country. And so, um, you know, we just got to be patient and we got to work and we got to continue to grow and get better. But, you know, it's about tomorrow and I'm not worried about really anything more than that. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Coach.